Hi, micro folks. We're here doing our um, coronavirus videos, and these are for our lab results. We, excuse me, we inoculated our tests, and then it's 48 hours later, so we're just looking at our test results. So this is going to be for Chapter 16, Metabolic Test Part 1. We're going to look at our PR sugars, PR carbohydrate fermentation media, and then also at theoglycolate. So folks, um, again, hopefully there'll be a PowerPoint which will go into more detail and also reading the lab manual chapters, you guys, is going to give you a lot of background information. So folks, you'll recall that the, um, the PR um, sugar fermentation medium, it has a single sugar in it and we name the media after the sugar. So we have PR glucose or dextrose, PR lactose, PR sucrose. Um, in addition to sugars, we have um, proteins, amino acids as alternate um, carbon and um, energy sources for microbes that can't ferment sugars. The pH indicator is phenol red. That's why it's referred to as PR for phenol red. It, um, at acidic pH, phenol red turns yellow. And at alkaline pH, phenol red turns this dark red fuchsia color. So the, um, the idea is if the microbe can ferment the sugar, it will make acids, the pH will drop, and the pH indicator will turn yellow. So yellow is positive for sugar fermentation. If the microbe can't ferment the sugar, it has to tear apart the amino acids as a source of carbon and energy. When um, they release the amino group as ammonia, ammonia acts as a weak base, the pH goes up, and the um, phenol red turns this beautiful dark red color. Okay, so what we can do is we can make little sugar fermentation um, fingerprints. So different microbes will have different fermentation patterns. Um, some microbes may not be able to ferment sugars at all. Um, some microbes, maybe they can only ferment glucose, but not um, sucrose or lactose. So we can come up with a little metabolic fingerprint here. So um, I just did a few examples, folks. Oh, and one more thing, sorry. And I keep, sorry folks, I keep getting this Xfinity advertisement. I don't know if you can see it, but it keeps popping up. All right. One more thing in the PR sugar um, fermentation media is this inverted glass tube. It's called a Durham tube, and its job is to collect gas produced during fermentation of the sugars. And those gases would be molecular hydrogen, CO2, or both. Okay. And just, this is just out of the photo atlas, folks. This is just a little cartoon showing uh, the fermentation pathways. And what we want to recognize is if our microbe is going to ferment a sugar, it'll be glucose. Um, it's a little bit harder to ferment uh, lactose because the microbe has to make an additional enzyme, beta-galactosidase. It has to hydrolyze the glycosidic bond between um, glucose and galactose and the lactose before it can feed it into glycolysis. And the same is true if you're going to ferment sucrose. You need one more enzyme sucrase to hydrolyze the glycosidic bond between glucose and fructose. So if a microbe can ferment glucose, it has to have additional genes um, for the enzymes to um, digest lactose or, or sucrose. Okay. So folks, I'll just show you a few examples. Um, here is my E. coli. And this is in glucose, right? So uh, I, because the medium is yellow, I know it fermented. The um, glucose made acids, and the phenol red turned yellow. And furthermore, you guys, and again, sorry, it's hard to see. I can see a great big gas bubble in the top of my Durham tube, and that tells me that my E. coli produced gas during fermentations. And again, that would be either molecular hydrogen, carbon dioxide, or both. Okay, so for E. coli, I would score this, um, we have a scoring system, you guys, if it's acid, we use a big A, okay, so this would be A for acid, and then we do a slash, and then we put a plus sign if there's gas, and a negative sign if there's no gas, so this would be A slash plus, so acid and gas from glucose fermentation. Um, here, you guys, this is um, PR lactose, and again, this is E. coli, let me move the tape label, so we can see that um, E. coli must make the enzyme beta-galactosidase because it could also ferment um, um, lactose, right? So to ferment lactose, you have to make beta-galactosidase. Um, we would predict the results should be the same as for glucose. We have A for acid slash um, a plus for gas being produced during fermentation. And then finally, folks, who else do we have here? And then, folks, here we have E. coli, 
in PR sucrose, and we can tell that E. coli has to make sucrase because it was able to ferment the sucrose. Okay, and again, we'd score it A for acid and then plus for gas. So, um, so E. coli can ferment um, glucose, um, lactose, and sucrose. So we know that E. coli makes beta-galactosidase to digest the lactose and sucrase to digest the sucrose. So folks, this, this other tube here is Bacillus subtilis. And I just wanted to show you Bacillus subtilis because this is Bacillus subtilis in, this is in um, sucrose. So we can see Bacillus subtilis makes sucrase because it's fermenting. It's fermenting the sucrose. But here you guys, I hope you can see that there's no gas bubble, right? So when Bacillus subtilis ferments the sucrose, it doesn't make gas, it doesn't make um, molecular hydrogen or CO2. So we would score this guy is A for acid slash negative for gas. Okay, just different, they use different fermentation pathways. And unfortunately, you guys, I was hoping my Pseudomonas, which is a stricter obligate um, aerobe, I was hoping my Pseudomonas would give us this alkaline result. Okay, so we'd score this K. We use a K for alkaline, means the sugar wasn't fermented. And if you have no sugar fermentation, you should always be negative for gas up here. So I was hoping our Pseudomonas would look like this, but something went goofy. And so we'll just pretend this was our Pseudomonas, right? And the reason um, Pseudomonas gives this result, it can't carry out fermentation. It has to carry out aerobic respiration. So it couldn't ferment the sugar, so it had to tear apart the amino acids, releasing the ammonia, and that's what gave us the alkaline re reaction. So you get this nice, beautiful fuchsia color with PR. So this would be negative for sugar fermentation. All right. And then as a follow-up, folks, um, in Chapter 16, we also um, we inoculated our theoglycolate media. And theoglycolate, you recall, reduces molecular oxygen. Okay, up at the top, there's a... Um, more obvious. Up at the top, folks, there's this green zone, oops, a green zone, and that's an oxidation reduction indicator where it's green, um, oxygen is present, it makes sense, we'll have some oxygen up here, but then down below is totally anaerobic from the theoglycolate reducing the molecular oxygen. And what we look for, folks, we, we don't want to shake these, we want to look at the pattern of growth, and again, folks, this might not work very well. But we can see here that the E. coli is growing throughout the tube. So this is telling us it can grow aerobically and anaerobically, right? So this is positive for anaerobic growth. That's how we're going to score this. Can your microbe grow anaerobically? Yes, it can. Okay, so positive for anaerobic growth. In contrast, folks, our Pseudomonas, which is a stricter obligate aerobe, it can only grow aerobically, right? So it's only growing up here. It's not growing anaerobically. So um, Pseudomonas um, is negative for anaerobic growth. It has to, it's a stricter obligate aerobe, just like we are. It has to carry out aerobic respiration. Okay? And this is also consistent with its inability to ferment the sugars. Okay? So remember, Pseudomonas can't ferment the sugars. It has to carry out aerobic respiration. Okay. And again, folks, we'll have a PowerPoint we'll have, which will have better photos of these. I know this is kind of hard to see. All right, so that's the end of Chapter 16. And then we just have Chapter 17, and I think, at least for today, you guys were going to be finished.